Hi guys, Lee here at the Ashby Golf Resort in the fitting studio and today it's the Road to Pro School episode 5. Now firstly apologies, I've not put a video out for about 2 or 3 weeks. I've been so busy down here um, with fittings and work etc. Um, and just changing a few things. So it's uh, it's been a while since I put a video out but is what it is unfortunately. Um, I'm going to hopefully from now on start putting more videos out. I'm trying to get to 3 a week if possible. So hopefully you'll see a bit more consistency. I'm aware that uh, the driver of 2021 has pretty much not happened for three or four weeks. I will get back into doing the next round of that as well. But I wanted to talk about my game uh, since the last video. So I've got my handicap down to 6.5. I played a round at Oakhampton uh, in with a group of 40 people. Uh, I won that with a net 65 and I shot, uh, sorry, a net 64 and I shot three over par, which was good. Game was in a great place. I did the Belfry, I'd gone 11 over par, eight over par, then I did Royal, uh, St. Enadoc at five, four or five over par, and then I did Oakhampton at two or three. So my game was going really well. But golf has got a way of just smashing you in the face. Um, and my game got found out yesterday a little bit because played a league match. Um, for those who don't know, I play in the Plymouth Area League for Whitsand Bay. And I was the lowest handicap of, of our group, not of our group, on our foursome, basically. So everyone had shots off me. And it's really the first time anyone's had proper shots off me. So one guy had five, the others had three. And I got found out is the, is the only way to do it. My game didn't stick up to the pressure. Started off like, like, like a god, basically. Um, hit, played at China Fleet, hit my drive over the net, had 75 yards in, hit a chip shot or a pitch shot from 75 using the clock routine that I've, I've done in here. And it was like that far away from the pin. It was a gimme birdie. And I thought, well, game's just getting in the right place. Then I duck hooked my drive off two, um, hit over the trees and couldn't find the ball. Um, four went left. And so the driver was having a day off and my irons weren't really sticking up to it. My short game and putting was phenomenal. Like it's the best I've ever had the short game or putting. And that was really what kept me in the game. Um, and I've come about the eighth or ninth hole, I kind of forgot how to play golf. It sounds stupid, but I was like, I'd just forgotten everything that I'd practiced. And that's where I got found out. I didn't have the game to play to six or seven at the time. Um, I've got the game to do it, but in that situation, when I was under a bit of pressure, I didn't have the experience, I didn't have the ability to draw on. So I need to practice more, I need to get routines in place, and I need to learn what I'm going to do if it all goes to pot, basically, because that's what happened yesterday. I still played okay, but I didn't play as well as I wanted to. I still won holes, I still halved holes, but it was a bit of a bit of like a scramble it was a bit like we didn't deserve to win basically we lost two and one we didn't deserve to win it's the first time I've lost this season and it's really annoyed me so I'm now determined that I need to practice more I don't practice enough and I don't practice enough to play to that handicap so I need to practice more going forward next week I'm playing Royal North Devon off the black tees which is the championship tees and it's playing over 7,000 yards reason I'm doing that beat the system is the aim that will then it's a high slope index and it plays four shots over its par as the standard scratch so it's like a 76 is standard scratch off the blacks so if i have a good round there i drop the handicap now i know what you're gonna some people are gonna say is like well if you can't play to 6.5 why are you trying to drop it down it's a process i don't for a second believe that i'm at the stage where i'm playing to 6.5 but if i can have a good round next week and I can drop keep dropping down then I'm doing it for a process and it's a business decision it's a business process it's to be able to go professional to offer coaching be a PJ pro and everything here it's not to play on tour it's not to play golf to that level it's a process with that in mind I've spoke to Dan this year is a no-no it's not going to happen this year I'm going to do it next year I'm going to try I've got the next 16 months to try and get sorry 13 months to try and get my handicap down to 4.4 and then that's when I will go pro because of the pressures of the playing aspects of it because I don't want to fail 
because I can't play to plus four on those events in essence. So yeah, it's a bit of a system, a bit of a system beating exercise, but today I just want to practice hitting my irons. I want to get used to doing the same thing. I want to get confident again. And the other issue I've got, it's a good or bad issue, is for the last four or five months I've had a frozen shoulder. So I've not been able to lift my arm higher than this. It's been okay swinging, but I've never been able to lift my, heart, my arm higher than this. Well, that is now cured to some extent. It's more or less back to normal. What that's done has brought my speed back up, which has brought my dispersion further out. When I had the frozen shoulder, I was at full speed for what my body would let me do. Now, I've got gradually gained that speed back, and as such, my game's gone a little bit wayward. So I now need to learn to go back to where the speed was with that frozen shoulder, because at full pelt, I can't control the ball well enough. When I was down with the frozen shoulder is when I've dropped all those shots because I was in control of the ball more. So today I'm going to do a couple of shots at my full speed, see where they're at, and then I'm going to try and rein it back in to where I was two or three months ago when I had the frozen shoulder. So let's get quad on and let's see what happens. Right, okay. Um, I've loaded up a hole and I'm 140 yards out, which for me is a pitching wedge. What I found yesterday is I was hitting the pitching wedge too far. So I've now gone to be, being about 146, 147 with the pitching wedge, which was too far and I couldn't control it. So I need to now learn to rein that in and hit this pitching wedge at 140, which is where I was with the problem with the shoulder. So we're just gonna get used to doing that. This is the issue. I've just lost all confidence in the irons. Completely lost confidence in it. It's as if I've forgotten how to swing a golf club. That's the only thing I can think of. So I'm falling off the ball there. Completely falling off the ball. Just lost all my balance. I don't, and the thing is, I don't know what shot shape I'm hitting. I'm just happy if I hit the ball. <laughs> At the minute, that's what it was like yesterday. So I need to get back into having that confidence and that ball striking, basically. That's a better shot. Yeah, that's a better shot. And it's like a lot of you have always said, Lee, you, you hit the ball too hard. And now my shoulder's kind of fixed a little bit. I am hitting the ball too hard. But... I always, I'm one of these players that likes to go full out. When I'm trying to take stuff off shots, I struggle. But I need to now learn to do that because full out with a non-hurting shoulder is too much. But with these clubs, it's easier. Suddenly when I get into long irons, I've just lost the plot. That's better, 141. Because the issue I had yesterday, I'll try and replicate it, is I try and hit the ball too hard and it goes too far. See so how much higher that goes? I mean, it's a good shot, don't get me wrong, but that's carried 145. And that's sort of me at, at full power and I, I shouldn't be like that. I lose control. I just need to have a controllable 140 yard shot with a pitching wedge. Yeah, it's much better, it's much, much better. Sit one more and then we'll go back a little bit. I didn't quite get all of that one. What I'm trying to say is, it's, I see it, and I'm, I was the worst for it. See, a lot of people just smashing the ball as hard as possible. And actually, learning to control the ball 
is better for you than just trying to whack everything. Bit far on that one. Right, let's go back a little bit further. Right, so we've come out to 175 now, and that's what I'd want this 7 iron to do. I'd want 150 to 155.9, 160 to 165.8, 170 to 175.7. But I've got a problem with 7 that I can make it go about 190. So that's gone too far, it's got 183. And I don't feel like I, I'd smash that. It's good to have that in the locker, but that shouldn't be my stock shot. 175 should be my stock shot. And I didn't even feel like I whacked that. And this is, this is what the issue is when I try and take stuff off try and take a bit of power off, I can get a little bit flicky with it. And then you do that on the golf course and your confidence goes 175. That's 178, so that's better. I can do it and that's just feels like an easy swing. Don't feel like I'm belting it, but it's, I've got to learn to practice that shot because my stock shot with a 7 iron is this. That's actually not a bad shot, it's a heel, that's the problem. So I kind of got away with that, so I hit it out the heel, but that was the issue, I got away with it. Just need to hit a nice 175 7 iron and not lose control. golf. So I have no problem thinking I can clear that water and you know people say well you'd rather be long than short. Well actually I'd rather be pin eye. That's fat as well. So this is something I've got to learn and practice is not hitting full shots is having a stock yardage and then being able to go further if I need to and short if I need to. So that just felt like a really good hit. A little bit on the short side, but it's... So yeah, 175 is where I want my 7-iron to be. And if that means I have to weaken lofts to get there because I can control that swing faster, swing better, then so be it but I don't want it to go really much further than that. So yeah, it's 180, 182. So now I'm 206 away. We're gonna show you the four iron. Now the four iron was always my favorite club in the bag until recently. Can't get the ball in the air. Sweet Jesus. I think the issue I've got is I try and keep these low and I shouldn't be doing that. Spin's good, launch is good. It's just confidence. As soon as you lose confidence, Everything just goes wrong. Just keep doing that, Lee. Just keep doing that. I don't feel like I'm swinging at that. I don't feel like I'm going after it. And it's probably going further than it would if I went after it. Yeah, so that's the one I can get. 224 carry. I think I need to weaken the lofts on my new irons. We'll see what happens when they come, but I think I'm gonna 
bend them a couple of degrees weaker. Because these, uh, these are going too far and it's causing me problems. There's the big hook pull. I'm not finishing on that. Right, let's try and get one close to the green. 205 yards. Let's carry it 200. Get near the pin. That's 220. Too far. Too far. So that confirms it for me. That confirms that yesterday, it, it sort of confirms what I saw yesterday and what I thought was happening was the ball for where I want it to go is going too far. Um, I want the clubs to go a yardage and I got used to hitting that yardage and then suddenly now my shoulder's a little bit better and I'm getting a little bit freer and a more speed in my swing. It's going too far. Um, and that's not... It's difficult, isn't it? Because people say, well, why don't you just get used to hitting it that yardage? Like, I don't want it to go that yardage for me. Um, at that kind of speed, it's a little bit uncontrollable. That last shot hit with the four iron is the speed that I want to be swinging it at, but carrying 224 yards or 220 yards is too far. I want that to be 200 to 210. So I'm not going to make any changes to these clubs because these clubs are going. I've got new clubs coming. When the new clubs come, um, I will gap test them. And if they're not going the yardage I want them to go, then I'll bend them a little bit to, to give them weaker lofts or stronger. depends which way they're going. But for the time being, it shows I need to practice being able to hit a yardage that's below the club stock yardage. It's something I've never really practiced. I've always just hit clubs, hit balls, hit whatever, and it's gone as far as it's gone. I've got used to hitting that. So if that was... 175 now that my seven eye can go 180 i'd probably try and hit a really hard eight where in fact i need to because i'm more confident and more comfortable hitting it yes it's more wayward but i'm more confident that i'd get that yardage trying to take something off a club is where i've struggled apart from wedges i've got used to that with the clock system so it's something i need to practice i definitely need to get that get in here and get all the clubs and find that gap now i'm not going to do it with these clubs because like i said i've got new ones coming but when they come i'm going to do a gap in session that i'll film so we know where they all are and then i'm going to do a second gap in session of trying to take something off and hit a yardage five ten yards less than the fitted than the fitted gap basically and see, and see if i can do that and that's something i've got to get used to doing it's something all the good players do you watch people like Will or Paul or Dan, even less. Watch those people. They've got the ability to take something off. I don't have that ability. And it's something that if I want to get down into those lower single figures, I've got to have that ability. Because you're not going to land at 175. You might have 172 or, you know, you're, gonna, you're never going to land on your stock yardage. They've got that ability to do it. And Will's superb at doing it, at taking stuff off or hitting something a little bit further, a little bit lower. Um, to get a little bit more run and all that lot. Um, and that's where I struggle. It's something I definitely struggle with and something I've got to learn. And I'm gonna do that on the course, um, on this series, so you can see me trying to achieve that. I'm gonna leave this episode here. Like I said, there'll be more videos coming out, um, hopefully more regularly. I do apologize for the, the wait you've had for those that have followed this series so far. Um, coming out uh, in the next couple of days is a ball fitting that I did here with the Titleist ball specialist Tom Hiscock really good eye opener for me and just to gain the knowledge so I can pass that on to you guys as you come here for fittings and ball fittings the difference a ball makes I've said it meant plenty of times but to go for a ball fitting with someone of Tom's knowledge was was superb for me and hopefully when the video comes out it'll be superb for you it's going to be a long video there's just going to be a lot of talking between me and Tom but hopefully you'll see the process and see the results that happen between going from a premium ball to something like a velocity ball and how the, the differences are and where the differences are and where there are no differences whatsoever. Anyway, that's the end of this video. If you've liked this video, please, as always, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or are returning and you're not yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. We're on our way up to 8,000 subscribers, which is fantastic. We'd love to get to 10 by the end of the year. Um, but until next time, I'll see you all very soon.